June 29, 1971. The crew of Soyuz 11 began their journey home. After having spent an impressive 23 days in space, they were eager to get back to their families and friends. People of Russia were also eagerly waiting to give a grand welcome to their national heroes as they reach Earth. But unfortunately, that was not going to happen. These three astronauts were never going to reach Earth alive. This is the story of Georgi Dobrovolsky, Vladislav Volkov and Viktor Patsyev, the first men to unfortunately die in space. After Neil Armstrong's historic first steps on Moon, on July 20, 1969, that established America's dominance in the space race. Russia had to come up with a successful space mission in order to challenge America's supremacy. Enter Sally at 1. World's first experimental space station that was launched on April 19, 1971, from Baikonur Cosmodrome, in Kazakhstan. With an expected lifespan of six months, Sally at one weighed 40,600 pounds and provided 3,500 cubic feet of habitable volume. It contained living quarters for cosmonauts and about 2,600 pounds of scientific equipment. Sally at one was established in Earth orbit in June 1971. Russian cosmonaut Grigory Dobrovolsky and his crew that included two other members, Vladislav Volkov and Viktor Patsyev, were about to spend three weeks aboard the space laboratory, conducting variety of experiments. Russia's mission to the space station had a bumpy start. Soyuz 10 was supposed to be the first mission to sally at 1, but the mission had to be aborted due to some technical errors. After all the rectifications, Soyuz 11 was finally chosen for the mission. Everything was ready, but again they had a setback. The original crew of Soyuz 11 were to be spaceflight veterans Alexei Leonov, Valei Kubosov, and space rookie Pyotr Kolodin. The crew trained for a 25 days mission that was scheduled for June 6, 1971. But during a medical checkup, Kubosov was diagnosed with tuberculosis. After much debate it was decided to replace the entire crew with their backups. Thus Dobrovolsky and his team was finally set off for Sally at 1 on June 6. On June 7, Soyuz 11 successfully docked into Sally at 1. Three hours after reaching Soliat, and after equalizing the pressure between Soyuz and the space station, the crew opened the hatch and Pat Syed float into the Soliat one, for the first time. Upon entering Saliat, Pat Syed felt a strong smell. Cosmonaut Alexei Yelisev, who was acting as the crew communicator, advised the Soyuz crew, to turn on Soliat's air regenerators. The next day crew re-entered Soliat to activate its system. The crew performed numerous experiments in Soliat for the next three weeks. In the meantime, they made many television broadcasts for the Soviet citizens, describing their scientific researches, and giving the people a glimpse of their daily life, aboard Soliat. Over the next three weeks, the three cosmonauts settled into a routine of conducting experiments, exercising on the station's onboard treadmill, and monitoring the state of their health. To maximize the amount of research time, the crew slept in shifts, with at least one cosmonaut awake at all times and working. It was the round-the-clock operations that resulted in the cosmonauts losing their optimum performance capabilities, as it interfered with their sleep. They grew Chinese cabbage and onions in the Oasis, one plant growth facility, and Pat Saev became the first person to operate a telescope in space, the Orion-1 ultraviolet instrument. 
They tested the condition of their cardiovascular system using a lower body negative device called VETA, which later became the Chibi's apparatus used on subsequent Soviet and Russian space stations and still used today on the Russian segment of the International Space Station. They periodically measured their pulmonary function and drew blood samples for later analysis. The crew cast ballots from Salyut in Soviet elections, becoming the first people to vote from space. On June 19, Patsayev turned 38 years old, the first person to celebrate his birthday in space. June 29, 1971. The crew reactivated Soyuz 11, gathering the films and samples that they have collected, they finally closed the hatch between Soyuz and Soliat. When a panel light indicated that the hatch of their return module has not closed properly, the crew was asked to reopen the hatch and clean the seals properly. Although the panel lights were still on, both the ground control and the crew were convinced that they were good to go. The cosmonauts proceeded to undock the Soyuz from Salyut. During the fly around, the crew photographed the space station that had been their home for three weeks. Tragedy struck at the altitude of 80 miles when explosive bolts separated Soyuz into its three components. The shock from the explosion opened a pressure equalization valve that normally opens once the parachutes of the spacecrafts were deployed. As the valve opened in vacuum of space, air escaped rapidly, the crew tried to manually close the hatch, but it took several minutes. The cosmonauts rapidly lost consciousness and with no pressure suit on, their chances of survival grew slimmer. As the module re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, all communication between the crew and the control center broke. The spacecraft parachutes opened as scheduled, and Soyuz made a soft landing, 320 miles east of Zeskazgan. Helicopters reached the spot, to receive the cosmonauts. Generally, the hatch is opened by the cosmonauts from inside, but when that did not happen, recovery forces opened the hatch from outside, only to find the lifeless bodies of the cosmonauts, inside. So, what actually happened inside Soyuz 11, in the last few minutes, that caused the death of three cosmonauts? According to the investigative reports, when the cosmonauts tried to close the hatch manually, a process that was going to take several minutes, there was a rapid loss of oxygen, thus the cosmonauts lost consciousness very quickly. The pressure too decreased rapidly, and not wearing the pressure suits proved to be fatal for them, sadly they died within minutes, before reaching the Earth's atmosphere. The tragic incident shook not only Russia, but the entire world, it was a huge loss for humanity. Drobovolsky, Volkov and Patsayev were awarded the Hero of Soviet Union Medal, posthumously. As a sign of honor or respect for the Russian cosmonauts, American President Richard Nixon sent astronaut Thomas Stafford to attend the funeral and pay tribute to the three heroes on behalf of all mankind. In 1975, Astronaut Stafford from America, Leonor from Russia, went to space in their respective spacecrafts Apollo and Soyuz, and docked in the orbit. They later performed what is known as the historic handshake in space. On August 2, 1971, Apollo 15 of America landed on Moon. Astronauts David Scott and James Irwin deployed a plaque and a statuette at the Hadley Apennine landing site in memory of the lost souls of Soyuz 11. In 1973, the Soviet government built a monument in memory of the Soyuz 11 crew, on the exact spot of their landing in Kazakhstan. Rarely visited in its remote location 16 miles from the nearest road, vandals destroyed it in 2008, carrying away the copper from which it was made. In 2016, Russian and Kazakh officials unveiled a new granite monument on the exact same spot. That was all about the ill-fated Soyuz 11 mission, and the three unfortunate but heroic individuals. Their contribution to mankind will forever be remembered. They will remain the heroes of not only Russia, but the entire world. Tell us in the comment section what you think about this story.
If you like the story, share it with your friends. Subscribe to our channel and stay connected. See you on the next one.